Amen. And welcome to worship today at Trinity Church. It's good to see all of you on this uh, first Sunday of Advent. As you can see, the, the pyramids uh, are now purple to remind us that this is a time that we wait. It's a time that we wait in discernment of what is to come. Uh, I want to thank everyone who came out yesterday to help uh, decorate the sanctuary. It is beautiful. Um, we have our Advent wreath with us. We will be lighting a candle each week for that. Uh, we begin a new uh, series, uh, message series uh, during Advent season uh, that's titled Come Home for Christmas. And today's theme is that it is time to go home. Uh, there is something else that is a first for today. This is the first day of Virtual Worship 2.0. And we welcome all of our internet worshipers into the sanctuary with us on this first Sunday of Advent. Uh, each uh, uh, we have been rotating the service uh, virtually each week uh, between churches uh, with Virtual Worship 2.0. Uh, the services will originate from a church for a month at a time. So you'll be joining us uh, here uh, at Trinity for the month of December, uh, recognizing that all of our sanctuaries, though, are decorated for Christmas, we will try to highlight uh, in some slides uh, pictures of our beautiful, beautifully decorated sanctuaries. Another uh, uh, joyful thing in uh, sharing uh, virtual worshipers with us here is that we'll be inviting you to engage with us at, during the sacrament of Holy Communion. Next Sunday, we will be uh, celebrating Holy Communion if you're worshiping at home, we invite you to uh, gather the elements of communion and have them ready for next Sunday. 
So with that said, uh, I invite all of you to settle your hearts and minds as you engage in worship as, as Ronnie leads you forth. Good morning. Let us continue our service this morning with our call to worship. Have you seen it, the spark of hope which God is placing among us? All the trees have lives, colors and darkness and fear. Look again, the Spirit of God is moving, bringing hope. We need to place our hope in God, though we are afraid. A long time ago, people were afraid, and God brought them to them light. May God bring that light to us today. Let us continue our service this morning with our opening prayer in unison. Concerned God, who makes yourself known to us in Jesus, who is our light, in whom there is no darkness at all, we praise you, the divine creator of the ends of the earth, the stars and the planets and the heavens above. We worship you. Amen. Reading from Luke 21, 25 through 28. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. God's people have always been people of hope. Take a moment to reflect on what you hope for as a child of God. And now we'll have a silent reflection. God of hope, grant us a vision of the future that is in harmony with your will for us. Amen. And now we invite you to join us in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, as seen on the screen. Our reading today comes from the prophecies of Jeremiah. I'll be reading from Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise 
I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these words that you have given us today. We give you thanks for this this time of Advent. May we incorporate it into our daily lives. We pray that uh, the words that are spoken here this day will be your words and not my own. We ask this in your name. Amen. So we, we say that Advent is an invitation. And the invitation is to uh, remember that we are called to be headed home. It's a call for a journey. I think each year we, we try to, we at least start out and try to make Advent uh, an invitation to get into the Christmas spirit, uh, to maybe in a way count down those days to the grand celebration of Christmas. Maybe in one way thinking of the Advent candles as a way to mark that passing of time, that time of waiting, of discernment. The hope is that Christmas will transform us. But as usual, we get overwhelmed. We get overwhelmed in the hustle and the bustle of the world around us, the advertising, the push to buy more and more stuff, thinking that it will show people how much we love them. And frankly, sometimes during that journey, we almost feel like we've entered a spiritual wasteland. Advent reminds us that we want to be those who look forward to something greater that we want to look beyond just the horizon that's in front of us. Advent is the call to come home. So our worship series is titled, Come Home for Christmas. And today we are talking about that it is time. Now is the time to come home. Airlines and airports this past week prepared for travel numbers that exceeded those of two years ago. Two years ago, prior to that time that the word pandemic became part of our everyday vocabulary. This time last year, maybe uh, instead we would have used the topic of stay home for Christmas, thanks to vaccines, we're a little bolder this year. This year we have hope, the hope to come home for Christmas. But we still can't let our guard down, as we see in the infections among our own people of the parish. In this picture, we we find a traveler standing in front of an information board at at an airport. The the board displays important things like arrivals and departures. And this particular board has a clock on the right. Maybe it's so that the person standing there taking in all of this information uh, can discern if there's time enough to 
to run down the, the breezeway to the, maybe the Starbucks before they head to the loading area. These boards in the airport also carry some information that we're not so excited to see. Delays and cancellations. Nothing brings on a sense of shock more to a traveler than to find out that their flight has been canceled. I've been there and done that myself. And, and even if, after you've been through it, and even though you learned that, hey, they, the airlines have always got things worked out, they'll get you to where you want to be. And occasionally, with a replacement flight, they'll get you there sooner than you thought you were going to get there. But even knowing that, you're still put in a place of anxiety when we find out that our plans have been changed because a flight was canceled. The first week of Advent deals with shock and anxiety. For months, the world has been priming us for Christmas with all the ads on television, the expectations. But we begin Advent with warning signs. We began Advent with flight interruptions. We began with prophecies. We look back in, on those ancient texts and we, we look at Advent through the lenses of those prophecies in Jeremiah and in Luke. We recite the Lord's Prayer every Sunday at prayer of the people in all three of our parish churches. Advent calls us to ask ourselves, how close are we to the kingdom of God that we proclaim in those words on earth as it is in heaven? It probably won't surprise any of you that I, I begin my Sunday mornings with a kind of a routine. Uh, it starts with coffee. And, it's, and then I sit down in front of the TV and I tune the TV to a channel that runs a show called Reflections. There's some beautiful scenery of uh, uh, mountains and plains of uh, animals and plants. And in the background, there's this subtle instrumental music, which you actually have to listen to and realize, oh yes, I know, I know that hymn. It's a soothing time, a time to bring me to settle as I read the newspaper. Because a mentor once told me, how can you preach the gospel to the contemporary world if you don't know what's going on in the contemporary world? It's a time of reading scripture. This morning I looked up at the TV at the beautiful scenery and there was a stink bug on the screen. The first inclination was to get up and shoo him away, or get rid of him. But I decided to watch him. The scenery was panning by as, as if there was a car driving slowly down a road and you see the land, the land go by. I watched the stink bug turn himself and orient himself in the direction of travel. So it was like he was moving and the scenery was behind him. In a while, the scene changed to a tall mountain, snow-covered snow mountain. And the camera began to slowly move up the mountain. The stink bug turned as if he were climbing the mountain. The stink bug found it very easy to go with the flow. That's kind of our temptation during this time of Advent. It's, 
It's easy to go with the flow, to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the world, the distractions of the world that would keep us from the journey home. I invite you to not be like the stink bug. Because I don't think during Advent that we are called to go with the flow. There are devotional books from the Society of St. Andrew that we placed in the, the narthex. I invite you to make use of those and to occupy part of your day in reading those devotionals. There are many ways that we can engage in spiritual practices during Advent. But it means not going with the flow. Judy and Joanne just lit the hope candle in our Advent wreath. This week we are called to uh, be reminded that hope invites everyone to be ready to head home, to be ready. When I was a young boy, mother and dad and I uh, took a lot of trips together. Uh, Dad was always adamant about having a vacation each year. And uh, now we weren't poor, but we certainly weren't healthy or wealthy. Uh, So we couldn't travel by plane, we drove. And we really couldn't afford to spend a lot of nights in a motel either, and so we camped in a tent. We stayed in state parks or private campgrounds. It meant there was a lot of stuff that we had to take with us, and so Mother prepared for that by leaving a spiral notebook on the kitchen table. And she would write down, as she thought of it, things that she wanted us to have with us on that trip. And Dad and myself were invited to write down our own things. As they were addressed, the red pencil was used to mark through it, noting that that was stacked over here somewhere, waiting to be packed in the car. Taking a journey involves preparation. It involves being organized. Advent is a journey. It's a time to get ready to go home. And what do we do when we're about ready to take a journey? Well, we do what Mother did. We create lists. We keep our minds focused on what it is that we're about to do. We keep our minds focused on what is getting ready to happen. We put things in order. In our churches, we decorate our sanctuaries. We bring out the purple pyramids to note that time of waiting. We hang the evergreens to remind us of eternal life. We anticipate practicing hospitality. And not necessarily just with those strangers and visitors that may come, but we practice hospitality with those we've not seen for a while. Who remembers the Motel 6 slogan, we'll leave the light on for you? Everybody's head is nodding. We light the candles on the Advent wreath, not as a countdown to Christmas, But instead, we light the candles on a wreath as a beacon to call us home. We'll leave the light on for you isn't just a slogan for the Motel 6. It's a gospel promise, a gospel promise that we will find our way home by the light brought into the world by the incarnate Jesus Christ. A light that the church is called to reflect out into a dark world. 
So there is hope. And Jeremiah offers it to us in in his uh, writings. The days are coming, declares the Lord. I will make a righteous branch sprout. A branch? No, a branch. Not a small B branch, a capital B branch. Not just any old branch, a righteous branch. It's not those branches that Joanne picks up from the yard at the parsonage after a storm or or the wind. We had a lot of wind this past week. It's not those branches. Those are dead branches. We're talking about the branches higher up on the tree. The branches that are still growing and reaching, reaching for heaven, reaching for that hope in the way that only trees know how to do. Those are the branches that we hope for. The branches of growth and new growth. Those righteous capital B branches remind us that there is more to come. There's more to be revealed. That there is hope in Advent. It's it's tiring to clean up those branches from the yard and the leaves and And uh, Joanne does it so faithfully. Occasionally, I will help. (laughs) But as, as we look up from that chaos, that mess in the yard, and we look up to the trees, we see life. And we see hope. We see the call to go home. And the trees that reach out to heaven. For some of us, we go forward by first going back. For others, we go back by first going forward. You have to think about that for a while. But no matter how we begin and proceed with our journeys, we are all called to be ready, to make ready, and to go home. On this first day of Advent, as we uh, look upon the, the candle of hope, we pray that we might be ignited by the hope of the kingdom to come. Ignited as it is time to go home as part of our Advent journey. And to God be the glory. Amen. It has been good to worship with you today on this first Sunday of Advent. I pray now as you continue in your worship today, as you continue with your Sabbath practices this afternoon that you will set in reflection of the journey, the Advent journey, that you will not go with the flow and remove yourself for a moment from the hustle and bustle and set with the meaning of Advent. I go forth in peace. And may you also go forth in peace. Now it's time for the discipleship of our gifts. We talked last week briefly about God being a cheerful receiver of your gifts. And God loves a cheerful giver. And we just want to thank everyone for ongoing gifts. Praise God. May we go to God in prayer and pray for our gifts. Oh God, we offer these gifts and tithes.
pray that these funds may abound in love for one another throughout the world. Strengthen our hearts and holiness as we faithfully give, so that our ways may be directed to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The affirmation of faith is what we will handle next. It's on the back of the open. It'll do it all in here. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe, we believe and trust in God the Father. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took on himself our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in God the Son. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust trust in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.